come on in and find a seat and pay attention Welcome to everybody the at Kings Trail Cowboy Church. Uh, my name is Jerry Jones. I'm the lay pastor over the arena team. And I just wanted to come to you today and give you some uh, things that we are doing in the arena. And did you know that the state sport of Texas is rodeo? Hey, is this where I come to learn more about Jesus? Well, yes, sir. This is absolutely the place to learn about Jesus. Not only do we have uh, bull ridings and, uh, and PRCA style rodeos, WSPBRs, uh, whether you're a professional or, or you're an aspiring youngster, this is absolutely the place. We will uh, not only will you get to experiment with the uh, bulls, but you will also get a devotion and uh, some type of Bible teaching. So, yes, sir, we'll teach you about Jesus. Hey, is this where I come to learn about Jesus? You bet, little buddy. I tell you what, we've got something for all ages, mainly for the kids. We really like to, uh, to uh, the Bible says to train up a child in the ways in which he'll go, and when he's old, he'll never depart from it. So you bet, we'll help you get started on your bull riding. We also have play days, and uh, whether you're a barrel racer, professional, or aspiring in that aspect as well, we are uh, all about the kids here. So we, you bet, I can help you. Well, yes, ma'am, absolutely. We, uh, we have various horse events. Uh, we do a lot of conferences. We have some trail rides that we set up, and uh, we would love to teach you about Jesus. So there you have it, folks. As you can see, there's a lot going on out in the arena. And uh, as Mark 30 says, it says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind, and all of your strength. So there's, we try to take every chance we can to spread the word of God and to speak about Jesus. Um, you know, and if livestock is not your thing, we still have a place for you. We've got concessions. We've got uh, maintenance. There's, if you're a, an equipment operator, we'd love to have you out there. And just remember, the purpose of the arena is to reach the working cowboy and the professional cowboy. But we also want to reach you, too. So, uh, like my grandfather always told me, uh, we'll treat you so many ways out there, you're bound to like one of them. Come see us. Amen. Well, let's go to the Father in prayer. Lord, we've come here this morning thankful for the rain. We've come here this morning, Father, thankful that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We come here, Father, this morning thankful that you, being the promise keeper, said when you gather in my name, I'm going to be among you. Lord, help us worship you in the freedom that you provided us. For it's in the worship of you that you show up and do your signs, wonders, and miracles. And some of us need some of that this morning. I ask you to do these things because you're the promise keeper. And it's in the name of Jesus. We all said amen. 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 Woo, 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 woo. Y'all kill the lights.
us a hand. Let's go. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my release. Come on. You're the Y'all don't mind if my friend Michael does one, do you? About some 
Praise the hallelujah.
good stuff. We'll set you free if you listen to him. Don't let pride be a stumbling block. Listen to what your pastor says this morning, and the Holy Spirit will cause things to fall off of you that you didn't even know you were carrying. Do you hear me? Listen to your pastor this morning. The word's going to set you free. Amen? Amen. Father, thankful that you're in charge. I'm thankful that this is your house. I'm thankful, Lord, you're resurrecting your reverence. Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, may you always get all the glory for all of this. May not even King's Trail get any glory. Nothing. Just all glory to you, Lord. You've taught me over the years, glory is too heavy for a man or a woman. You're the only one that can carry it, so may we always give it to you. Jesus, sometimes I wonder what would be the perfect prayer to get you to move the most. I don't know that prayer, but I know you can move whenever you want, and we ask that you do that today. Lord, uh, help me present this message in a manner that is pleasing to you and an equipping of the saints and convicting of the lost. Lord, we love you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> this, uh, this message has been, uh, I don't know the right words to say, but it's been uh, um, cooking maybe for over a decade now. The very first time I... The Lord put this message on my heart. Uh, I was watching my wife uh, change a diaper, and uh, and this is where I don't know about you other mamas. I know my mama, and I know my wife as the mother of our children. They were really good at cleaning up some messes, and then I tried to replicate that one day, and I think I made a bigger mess, and I. Um, I don't do well with smells, and so um, I have to change a diaper like in sessions. Like I only last about 15 seconds, and if I don't have it clean by then, I have to go outside the room and take a deep breath and then try it again. So the Lord's been putting this message on me for um, some messages. You'll sit down and just bam, the whole thing's there. In some messages, he just builds over time. He'll just give you a little bit of it, leave it alone, and give you a little bit more, leave it alone. And so, um, one of these messages. Um, there's been times that I've been accused um, for preaching and teaching about things that are currently going on in people's lives. Um, I have several stories about that. And I wanted to say from this pulpit, by God's grace, I have never, nor will I, by God's grace, ever present a message directly pointing at one person or per, or people. I believe that's misuse of this pulpit, and I believe God would immediately discipline me if I ever do that. Um, so I, I sincerely try to present a word that God has shown me. Um, you know, every one of us will hold an account to the Lord, every one of us. And I know that in that area, um, the Lord has uh, firmly warned me that's not what that pulpit is for. And all the gifts of the Holy Spirit are there to edify the body of Christ. And today's message is called Messy. And maybe everything is going good in your life right now. But I can assure you, even if it is, you're going to need to understand messes better. And uh, you're going to need to know how to clean up a mess uh, when it happens. Um, I was also reminded um, of Proverbs 26.11. It says, as a dog returns to his own vomit. So a fool repeats his folly. How I many you know that that's not how you clean up a mess? Right? There's going to be some stuff I say today that are pretty gross. And you'll wonder why I'm saying it from the pulpit. But 
it, I believe some things we need to hear. It, would we all agree that I could read you some scriptures out of the Bible and you not even know what I'm reading from? Say you're blindfolded or you're on a telephone. I just read a scripture out of the Bible and I say, hey, w w what author do you think wrote that? And you would never guess the Bible. There is some scripture. So sometimes uh, we need to talk about some junk um, to help us further our walk with the Lord. Um, I was really intrigued by, anybody ever had to clean up a grease mess, a grease spill? And so real quick, anybody, how do you clean up a grease uh, spill? Cat litter is the number one way. What's another, some other ways? Flour, sawdust, sand. You need some type of absorbent. And when I was studying this this week on specifically cleaning up messes, because I remember um, our children, uh, we teach them at an early age um, to help clean so mom and daddy don't get tore up the rest of their lives. They're teaching the kids how to do the same. And I remember we had a grease spill, and I remember Dallas, he, he immediately got a rag, and he started doing like this. I mean, you know, he's just spreading it all over the place. And then he's getting it all over himself. And what the Lord showed me with that, it says, some messes you make in the spirit, you're going to need a good absorbent. Some messes you make in your emotions or in somebody else's emotions, you're going to need a good absorbent. And man, the Lord immediately showed me my wife's face and said, she's a good absorbent for your messes. And uh, I've made plenty of messes in, in my marriage, plenty. And uh, my goodness, my Lord made my woman very strong and, and she's able to absorb a lot. So I'm thankful for her. Not only my life, but people in my life where I've made some messes and they just absorbed it while I was trying to learn how to do something. Amen. So I pray that you have some some people in your life that can absorb your messes, absorb your mess ups. Um, so praise be to God for that. Um, this picture is actually a picture of a river. It's in Nairobi, Kenya. I've, I've, I pulled up on a bridge. This is not my picture, but I pulled up on a bridge, and the, the man of God we were driving with, I don't know why he did it, but he rolled down the window, and he started describing this river. They, the locals there call it the Black River, and uh, it is impressively filthy. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, it's my first thought when he rolled down the window and I, the smell hit you, my first thought was, we could die if you don't roll up the window. It was so nasty. And then the Lord started sharing with my heart, like, you can see all kinds of trash in there. And maybe one plastic bottle, no big deal. Maybe one piece of trash, no big deal. But over time, if we keep having no big deals in our conversation and our relationships with life, it can compound to where now you become the local dump. And we need to learn how to get rid of this trash and clean up this mess. There's obviously trash in there. There's sewage um, in there. That's probably where the smell came from. And when I say this next one, some of you may be angry with me. Um, that's not my intent to ever make anybody angry, but I, I want it to have the same effect on y'all as it did on me. Um, when I was doing recent research about the Black River in Nairobi, Kenya, they've done a huge cleanup project for it. And the ones that are volunteering the most is the generation um, that is old enough to say when we were little boys and girls, we swam in this river. We caught fish in this river. We did our laundry in this river. It was a clean, beautiful cleansing river. And now it looks like that, the whole thing. And so as these people started to do this cleanup project, three separate occasions, they found a freshly born baby dead in the water. And the reason why I say that is because every once in a while, I'll get wrapped up in my little circle of life and think that my problems are big problems. And when God shows me stuff like that, he immediately causes me to repent and say, Lord, forgive me for thinking my problems are any problems at all. My goodness, not one, not two, but three babies found in that river as they were cleaning it up. That, that just immediately caused me to check myself. Make it not all about me. Make it not all about the issue. But again, take your eyes off the issue and put it back on Christ and just do what he says. We sing these songs, but oh, do we live these songs? That's what the Lord tells my heart sometimes. 
He said, I'll praise you in this storm. And then every once in a while, the Holy Spirit will say, do you really? Or do you praise me when you get your way? And then when you don't get your way, you whine until you get your way again. Anybody say amen to that one? Amen. amen. The preacher can too. So if y'all would turn to Genesis chapter 42, please. I have five different messes I want to talk about today that the Lord put on my heart. This story, chapter 42, is Joseph's brother, brothers go to Egypt, but this story actually starts in chapter 37. Jacob, or Israel, had 12 sons. One of them's name was Joseph, and the Bible would say Jacob, his dad, liked him the most or cared for him the most, depending on your translation of, your, of the Bible. And he made him a coat of many colors. And then it said Joseph would go out into the field with his brothers because they were shepherds. And as they were doing, Joseph actually came back and tattled on his brothers and said, gave a bad report about his brothers. So that made him angry. And then right after that, in this time set, um, Joseph is 17 years old. And as a 17-year-old young man, he's already making his siblings mad. So God gives him a dream. There's these these sheaths, these wheat sheaths. And he says, in this dream, he goes and tells his brothers, he said, hey, in this dream, all of us were sheaths and mine raised up and then all, all y'all's sheaths bowed to me. And they were like, what do you think we're going to bow to you? You're crazy. They got angry with him, told dad. And dad was like, what are you talking about? And then the very next dream he had, he said, I had another dream and the sun and the moon and the stars were all bowing down to me. And then, then, then his daddy rebuked him. He said, what, me and your mother are now going to bow down to you uh, along with your brothers? And he rebuked him. So now they're out in the field again, and uh, Joseph seems to be like a, a sibling that makes everybody mad but really doesn't care, and he just keeps living life. Anybody ever have it? Don't raise your hand. They might be sitting with you. <laughs> as soon as I did that, I was like, that was stupid. <laughs> Starting family violence at church, that's not good. But we can know if you have a family dynamic, we can know we can actually do this to each other. So they're out there, and they actually scheme together to kill him. They took his coat, and they killed a goat or something, and they poured blood all over the coat of many colors. And, and actually, Reuben, the, the firstborn, and y'all listen to this, because if you're the firstborn, I believe God will hold you a little bit more accountable than the rest in the family. He said, no, we're not going to kill him. And they threw him down in a pit, went back and lied to dad, they actually sold him to a caravan for 20 shekels of silver that was headed to Egypt by these band of people. And they went back and said, hey, your son must have been you know, torn up by a beast and dad was really upset. So we fast forward. The Joseph story is beautiful. He literally goes from the palace or Potiphar's house to prison and then to the palace. It's a really beautiful story. But this is where later they had seven years of plenty and seven years of drought. So if you're in a season where God is blessing you a lot, stand by can I just be blunt? That doesn't mean sushi every night. That might be save it up because God can see what's coming. Amen. Amen. So if you have a season of blessings, be cautious with that blessing and then don't just destroy it overnight. And so now they've already lived through the seven years of plenty. Long story short, Egypt has now gotten everybody's land, basically all of them, and has all the food. And if you want to eat, then people have to go to Egypt and buy from Pharaoh and Joseph is now second in command. He's the governor of Egypt, second in command. He only, he only speaks to Pharaoh. Everybody else has to listen to Joseph. So let's start at chapter 42, verse 1. Genesis 42, 1. When Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there that we may live and not die. So Joseph's 10 brothers went down to buy grain, Egypt, but Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, least some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the, the land and it was uh, he who sold to all people of the land and Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. How many know that sometimes we can speak roughly to family? 
and feel justified for doing it. Amen. Lord, teach us how not to speak roughly to each other. Forgive us where we have spoken roughly to each other. Then he said to them, where do you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them and said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, no, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are the honest men, and your servants are not spies. But he said to them, No, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, your youngest is with our father today, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. In this manner you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you and let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison that your words may be tested. How many know that at times your words will be tested? That arena does it all the time. Does it all the time. I used to ride bulls. You want to ride one today? No. Right? Sometimes we can have them tested for a hard test, and sometimes we can just people test you out to see whether there is any truth in you. Or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put them all together in prison three days. Everybody say three days. Then Joseph said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house, but you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses and bring your youngest brother to me so your words will be verified and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we would not hear. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. Another translation for verse 21 is, We're all guilty because of what we did to our brother. They told each other, we kept on watching his suffering while he pleaded with us. We're in this mess because we would not listen. I mean, you know, some messes that you come across, it's because you refuse. I'm thankful that uh, Elder Fred said, don't let pride come here today to where it can't help you. Some of the messes we're in, some of the messes we have experienced in our life. Some of the messes we will experience in the future is because we refuse to listen to sound counsel. Amen. Amen? Um, that, that struck my heart. I was like, how many times have... I, I, there was a time in my life I would refuse to go ask my dad some advice. Do you know why? Because I knew he would give me correct advice, but I also knew I probably wouldn't like it. Does anybody ever, don't raise your hand, have you ever avoided asking for help or asking for advice because the Holy Spirit already told you what to do, but you didn't want that confirmed because then there's like a more accountability for it? And it's easier if you just don't listen and you act like Charlie Brown teacher, wah, 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 I don't know what you're saying, right? Has anybody ever been listening? Even in church, you, the preacher can be talking and you're like, I'm not listening to this part because it struck a chord to where you're convicted and maybe you caused a mess here recently. I caused a little mess, not a big mess, but it was a little mess last night with my mouth. You know one of the fastest ways to clean up a mess? I'm sorry. That was wrong. Forgive me. Amen. It's one of the fastest ways to clean up a mess, but sometimes we refuse to do that because, no, I'm always the one that apologizes. They need to come to me and finally apologize too. Sound familiar? <laughs> Amen. But if Holy Spirit has spoke to your heart, then go. Amen. Amen. And so many times we get in a mess because we refuse to listen. Can anybody say Amen. amen. So the first one is a didn't listen mess. The second one is called a continual mess. Turn to Proverbs chapter 26. How many of you know that a mess won't clean itself up? It has to be cleaned up. And I found this interesting that none of us have to be taught on how to make a mess. You don't have to have great discipline and self-control to clean up or to make a mess, right? 
But you do need to be taught how to clean up a mess. You do need to be taught how to, uh, to have discipline and self-control because your emotions are going to want to not clean up a mess. I, I'm not joking. In, in our family, um, I, t I called our twins one time into the kitchen while Maylee and Jesse were washing the dishes and putting them in the dishwasher. And I started walking the twins into the kitchen, and Molly goes, what are you doing? I said, they're going to help clean dishes. And she was like, they're two. I was like, good point. I said, I don't mean they're going to clean the dishes, but how many you know that planting seeds is powerful? So Dallas and Dakota sat on the counter and watched their brother and sister clean dishes for at least a year before we let them touch any of them. I believe planting seeds are very powerful. Not only should we learn how to clean up messes, we should be teaching those who are younger than us to at least watch us clean up messes. Because does that not what a teacher does? They present the material, then eventually you're going to have to apply and see what you really retain from it in the test. And the more we prepare our children how to clean up a mess, the better they will be successful in life. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So the second one's called a continual mess, and we all know by common sense um, that messes will not, never once did I just saw, see the kitchen just start cleaning itself, right? And this sounds funny, but it's true if we make an emotional mess or if we make a spiritual mess. If you sit still and idle and you refuse to do what Holy Spirit tells you, don't sit there in two months from then and go, Lord, what's happening? Amen. Amens are quiet on that one. <laughs> Proverbs 26, verse 20. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no tail bearer, translation, a whisperer, strife ceases. And that makes sense. If you want a fire to go out, quit putting wood on it. Right? I walked into a business last week and I said, hey, what y'all doing today? He said, ain't nothing but putting out fires. And some fires you better deal with. Amen. You, mean you need to confront it and deal with it. And some fires will go out if we would just stop talking about it. We would just, can I be blunt? If we would all just shut our mouth and just keep living life. What did Titus say? Mind your own business and live a quiet life. Amen. Sometimes if we learned that one simple principle, things would change. The fire would go out because we're no longer adding fuel to it. This is the one that I fail miserably at times in our marriage. Molly's the mature one that'll say, hey, can we stop this and talk about it tomorrow? I'm like, no, I got three more points to make. <laughs> how many you know, if you, if you are that person in a relationship, how many you know that never works? Never one time have I finished my three points and went, she went, that makes total sense. I'm now, I'm now so in love with you so much more. <laughs> Amen. That never works, does it? So sometimes, praise be to God, the Lord brought me a strong, smart woman, and she's like, hey, we need to shut this down because all we're doing, she says, as you keep talking, you just keep getting more mad. I'm like, you're right. Can I finish one more? Isn't that crazy how we are? We think if we say that, it'll be done. And it's not done. It meant you say that one thing, you just thought of three more. Right? We just need to learn how to stop putting logs on the fire. And listen to this. Verse 21. As charcoal is to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The Bible, when I first started reading it, and I was excited to read it. I was excited to learn the Word of God. And when I read the Pro book of Proverbs... I probably about chapter 20 shut the book. And I was like, Lord, it's about 10 times this book has called me a fool. Not only a fool, it, it instructs people don't hang out with a man like Jason in that time. It says, do not make friends with an angry man, lest you learn his ways. Amen. And so it says right there, so is a contentious man. So if somebody is super angry, don't try to fight fire with fire. That ain't going to work in an argument. Somebody has to be the mature one and just be quiet. If y'all believe that, say amen. amen. Verse 22, this gives a different perspective. Again, this is called the continual mess, right? Verse 22, the words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the inmost body. Would y'all like to see a literal example of that? So we all go somewhere, and you're super hungry, and as soon as you walk into a restaurant, they have all this tray of beautiful, delicious food. How many of us in that moment would want to go, whoo, 
Give me one of those, right? But if it could, the sweetness of it could make my stomach hurt, right? It tastes good to the mouth, bad for the stomach, right? And this is what it's like in real life. Here's what that verse is talking about is when somebody comes up and you go like this. Hey, did you hear about Pastor Jason? You go, no, but I want to know now. <laughs> you can be tempted to eat something. This Bible declares that it's bread, that it's word, right? Words of life. Jesus is the living word himself. The power of life and death is in the tongue, and he who what? Eats of it, or he who says it will eat of its fruit. So it, the Bible is declaring that words are like food. And just as we need to be careful at times what we're eating in our physical bodies, we need to be careful what we're eating in our spiritual bodies. Amen? And, and gossip will never be tasty to the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, it's one on God's hate list. Those who cause division among the brethren. It's a continual mess. How do we stop it? Don't be tempted when it comes to knock on your door and want to talk about it. And two, quit putting logs on the fire. If you believe that, say Amen. Luke chapter 17, please turn there. The first time I read this, it broke my heart. Y'all know that story where David was king and the prophet Nathan came and told him a story and David heard the story and he's like, who's that man? Bring him to me right now and I'll kill him. And the prophet Nathan, praise be to God, if you're a man or woman of God, you better learn how to be brave or at least ask Jesus to make you brave because he'll have you say things you don't want to say. And the prophet Nathan in that moment pointed at David and said, you are the man. And when I was reading uh, Luke chapter 17, starting at verse 11, I had a you are the man moment. How many times have you read the Bible or read parts of the Bible and you're like, that's cool, amen, yeah. Yep, I can see people doing that too. And then you read part of it and you go, I am so sorry, that's me. That's me. Luke chapter 17, verse 11, 10 lepers cleansed. How many know that's a physical mess? How many know there's some messes out there that only Jesus can clean? He never even wants you to stand up and put your hands on it. Hallelujah. Verse 11, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was as they went. Everybody say, as they went. As they went, they were cleansed. How many know that Jesus has full power and authority to touch somebody with leprosy and it's gone? Immediately. The mess. He can divinely touch a mess and immediately make it disappear. But in his wisdom and sovereignty, sometimes he says, I'm not cleaning this mess up until you at least learn obedience. And it says, as they went, they became healed. And that's what I, is one of the ways we can clean up messes is we learn how to be obedient to this right here. We learn how to be obedient to this right here. And this is what broke my heart, verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Y'all know what that means? He wasn't a religious person. He wasn't a Jew. He didn't know anything about the synagogues and the, and the scrolls. The one that wasn't churchy came and told Jesus, thank you. And I sat there, I sat there yesterday when I was reading and I was like, my goodness, Lord, how many times have you cleaned up my mess? And I never even came back and said, thank you. How many of you know that we'll get down at this altar and we'll supplicate and we'll pray in tongues, we'll pray in English, we'll pray, we'll praise the Lord, we'll even dance, we'll do whatever we can. Just give me what I want. And sometimes God will give you what you want. He'll give you the desires of your heart because he's changed your heart. But then how many of us run back to this same altar and say, Lord, thank you. You are the one that showed up and cleaned my mess. How do you know when you make a mess, it's embarrassing? It's embarrassing at times if you make a mess. Nobody likes to make messes. But, man, I, this one hit me. It's called a clean-up mess that you, once Jesus does clean up your mess, let us all, to include the preacher, my goodness, let us all remember to go back and tell Jesus, thank you for cleaning up my mess. 
If y'all believe that, say amen. amen. Lord Jesus, help us do that. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We had a didn't listen mess. We have a continual mess. We have, don't forget to thank him after he does clean up your mess. This one's called a unique mess. And if you don't know the word of God, you can get really angry at God. And since you don't know the word of God, you're getting very angry at a God who forewarned you of what was coming. How many know if you stand up and serve Jesus, you got some messes coming? Amen. Are you ready, church? And none of them are your fault. The reason that mess is coming upon you is because you love Jesus and not only said yes to salvation, but you said yes to service, yes to discipleship. And that's called sharing the sufferings of Christ. Or let's translate it literally today, share in the messes that he experienced in himself. And 2 Corinthians chapter 1 would declare, the more that I get closer to Christ, the more the messes are going to stir up, but the more peace. And you know what he says? I love this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. It says that I will suffer, not just Jason, but if you're a born-again Christian who stands up for Jesus and does what he says when he says it, the Bible says when you do that, you're going to receive a mess, ready, for their sake. How many know that moms, dads, Changing the diaper, you didn't make that mess, but you're cleaning it up for what? For their sake. So they don't sit in filth and then get diseases and sickness and then sit there and die. How I many you know that can happen spiritually and emotionally as well? And sometimes we can go involved in so many different messes, we don't even know how to interpret all these messes anymore. This is why it's important to learn how to cleanse. Read the, let the wife be sanctified by the washing of the water of the word. Y'all took showers today, yesterday, hopefully in the last week. Goodness. <laughs> How many know if you don't shower, people are going to stop hanging out with you? Right? It's same spiritually. We can have certain things, unclean spirits hanging out with us because you prayed over 15 people last week, and now you've got some junk on you, and it needs to be washed off through the Word of God. It needs to be washed off through praise and worship. It needs to be washed off from reading of the Word or having a brother or sister in Christ put their hands on you and say, you know what, you're going to leave them alone and get off of them. This is how the Lord has taught us how to wash them. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life. Y'all know this is the Apostle Paul talking to a preacher, a young preacher. He's saying, look, you, if you want to stand up and serve Christ, if you want to be a minister for the Lord, things are going to happen. If y'all believe that, say amen. amen. Manner of life, purpose of faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch and at Iconium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Can anybody say hallelujah? hallelujah? There's not one mess that he can't clean up. Verse 12, yes, and all who desire, everybody say desire. desire. To live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecutions. Amen. Unique messes will show up. Listen, church, it didn't say if you stand up and be a doer of the word. It said if you now start to desire to live a godly life. And if you don't understand that, you sit there and go, you know what? I heard the preaching. I heard the praise of worship. The Lord's planted enough seeds in me. Yes, I hear the calling of the Holy Spirit. I stand up and I'm going to do what he says for me to do. You hit in that moment, have desire. Here it comes. That's not speaking death on anybody. You know, and, and, and people say, hey, careful. Don't declare death over people. I'm not. The power of life and death is in the tongue. But also in the military and law enforcement and all many careers that I've had, I know this. We had what we called safety briefings. How many of you know that Jesus gave safety briefings? Before we went into the Panama jungle, second, a double canopy jungle, they gave us a three-hour safety briefing of everything that can kill us, to include a foot-long stick bug that's poisonous and a little fluorescent yellow caterpillar called a star cluster. Oh, by the way, rangers, guess what? It hangs out under green leaves. I'm like, we're going in a jungle. <laughs> and after three hours of them telling us, if everything in there can kill you, I was sitting there nudging my ranger, but I was like, well, so why are we going in? <laughs> and so we go in there, and I'm thankful that they spent three hours with us to, to warn us of the pit viper. It's the largest pit viper in the world. It's poisonous. Guess what? It strikes so hard that a, a soldier from Fort Drum, New York, 
went down there, did a land navigation course in uh, JOTC, Jungle Operations Training Center, where you have green braids teach you how to walk in the jungle. Praise the Lord, God will send a green braid and a spirit to go with you, amen. And one of these soldiers got struck by a pit viper. Bam! And when it struck him, it struck him so hard it cracked his femur. There's things out there like that in the spirit, and there's some ways, there's sometimes we don't need to take spiritual advice very lightly. We need to adhere to these warnings. And so he's saying to the young preacher, hey, anybody, not just you, Timothy, but anybody that desires to live a godly life, here it comes. Here comes some messes. It's a very common phrase. Man, I finally stood up and served the Lord. I had two flat tires last week. Everything broke. Anybody ever experienced this? Guess what? You don't have to sit there and take that unnecessary punishment. Guess what God's teaching you now? How to take authority over where you're walking. You say, you're going to leave my truck alone. You're going to leave my wife alone. You're going to leave my kids alone. You're going to leave our finances alone. You're going to leave my land alone. You're going to leave my animals alone. How many know that we have to come to a point where we get, we're willing to say that as well? Because if not... I mean, you know, a devil, you put out a fire over here, he'll cause three over here. You'll put all those three out, he'll cause five, and you'll sit there and go, Lord, why are you doing this to me? And it wasn't God at all. If y'all believe this, say amen. amen. Unique mess. We all, there's, and there's nobody. You know what it doesn't say in there? Unless you're a pastor. Unless you sing really good. Right? It doesn't say it. It says, you stand, and here it comes. Hallelujah, but that's a mess, praise the Lord, that the Bible's complimenting you over. Blessed are you when they lie about you. That's a mess. Turn to Romans chapter 5 for the last mess. I remembered this time, Rebecca. Hey, that's a good word. Master of peace is the master of peace. Ooh, that tastes good. Romans 5. Everybody raise your right hand, please. Say, Jesus, Jesus. help me understand this. Help me understand. Amen. Amen. Romans 5, verse 12. Death in Adam, life in Christ. Therefore, just as through one man's sin, you can just go ahead and say mess right there, entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men. How many know that messes can spill out and start affecting other people? One man's act of disobedience, that mess covered the whole planet. Because all sinned, for until the law of sin was not in uh, the world, but the sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Jesus, help me read correctly. Sometimes I stumble. Thank you, Lord. Even over those who have not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam. He, he said, slow down. Who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift. Everybody say the gift. The gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more, everybody say much more. That's so good. Those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in the life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in the justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. How many know that you're not righteous because you come to church more than the next person does? You're made righteous, and righteous means right standing with the Father. And your righteous is because of what Jesus did for you if you're born again. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, listen to this church, even so grace might reign through righteousness 
to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you believe God's word, say amen. amen. Adam made a big old mess. It's called sin. Matter of fact, Genesis chapter 3 says, Cursed is the ground for your sake. The whole planet was cursed because of Adam's disobedience. But because of Christ's obedience to his father. Y'all remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me. But not my will, yours be done. Because of what Jesus did for you and I, he cleaned up the mess of sin. It's no longer on you if you're born again. Amen? If you believe that, say amen. amen. I don't, I, some people think I try to be, I don't know. I don't even know the word. All I'm trying to do is do what I hear, what I hear him telling me to say, and do what I see him showing me to do. Does that make sense? I mean, you know, that's what Jesus did with the Father. So I'm not doing this to be tricky. I'm not doing this to be showy. I'm doing this because I saw me doing it at the end of this message. The title's called Messy, and then I saw me come up here and do this right here. What does it say now? And I, and I said that. I saw me do it. He goes, what does it say? I said, Messiah. He goes, that's right. I am he who cleans up your mess. <laughs> Amen. And so let me say this. Even if you're really good at cleaning up messes, even if, matter of fact, the Bible says that praying and fasting, you, will, you if you do that and you counsel and you help people, that you'll become to have a reputation of the repair, repairer of the breach. God will use you how to fix things and how to clean up messes. But even if you can clean up all your messes up in your life, there is one mess that you will never clean up, and that's the mess of sin. And only Jesus can clean that up. If y'all believe that, say amen. amen. I'm not trying to be churchy. I'm serious because not everybody in here is born again. And not only will he clean up your mess of sin, he'll clean all your messes up that you've ever had in your life. I, I felt led to write down some messes. If you have a personal mess, he can clean that up. My, the Lord has cleaned up. I, I'm sure I'm not the only one here, but the Lord has cleaned up so many messes in my life that I have made on accident and on purpose. Y'all know there's a, there's a sacrifice in the Old Testament. You know what it's for? Unintentional sin. It, I remember my dad, <laughs> there was one time at our dinner table when me and my brother were, were little boys. I remember one time my dad had a, he had a, a water or a drink, and he set it down in front of me. He goes, don't you spill that and say it was an accident. I was like, man, that's some pressure. I mean, you know, you can, there's a season of your life that you, you accidentally just keep making messes. Amen? Well, there can be a season in your born-again life that you, you're causing a bunch of accidents. So you can have a personal mess, physical mess. This Bible right here says, why should you die before your time? How I many you know that we all have a time? Th this heart inside this chest right now, that God has ordained, this thing will beat this many times, and I don't care who prays for him, he's gone. Is that true? Say amen. amen. But this Bible also says that I can reduce how many times this thing beats because of certain things and the ways I live. Amen. If y'all believe that, say Amen. You can have a physical mess, and God will teach you how to do that, how to clean up a physical mess. How many know if you let go of a physical mess too long, you can then die, right? You can then die, and you caused a bigger mess in the family because now they miss you and they love you. This goes back to when I saw Dallas cleaning up some grease, and he was just making a bigger mess. You can have an emotional mess. Jesus can touch your mind. You can have spiritual messes. You can have financial messes. There's a time Molly and I were so crazy in debt. Um, I don't know if anybody here has experienced it, but you ever have a month where you have more month than money? Right? And so, how many you know there's financial principles in here? And so Molly and I, praise the Lord, she knows how to do Excel spreadsheets. She's like a little ninja at it. She'll put her little formulas in there and it just adds it up by itself. I'm like, I'm thankful for you. And uh, we started really paying attention to our finances. And we started praying over it. Are you ready, church? We started praying crazy prayers. Lord, would you call somebody, walk up and write a check and clear the whole thing out? How many of you know that God can do that? He did that. He did that. We're no longer in debt. 
God, if you pray, apply his principles, keep praying, keep doing what he says, he will clean up a financial mess. Yes, he will. You can't convince us he won't. Amen. Marriage mess, relationship mess, career mess, church mess, team mess, home mess, state, community, city, national, worldly messes. There's messes all over the place, but we need to learn how to clean up. How many know that the Bible says judgment comes to the house of God first? We need to learn how to clean up our messes before we jump off into somebody else's mess. Amen. I need to learn how to do that myself before I even begin to walk up on this stage and start telling other people how to do it. How many know that even after you learn how to do it, you're not going to be perfect? Amen. Can we all stand, please? Band, can you come? Ministers, pastors, can you come, please? Father, you gave us a promise. You said when your word goes forth that it will do the very thing you intended it to do. It will not return void. Lord, your word has been praised. Your word has been worshipped by the, this powerful band you, you gave us. The word has been preached, declared, read, and believed. Lord, you know how to clean up all of our messes. Lord, I'm thankful uh, for all the messes you ever cleaned up in my life. Lord, I'm thanking you ahead of time for cleaning up the messes I make in the future. Whether it was out of dumb, immature anger or it was on an accident. Uh, Lord, uh, you said with you, nothing is impossible. And you said if any two of you ask anything, that our Father in heaven would do it. Lord, we all have messes. Every one of us has different types of messes. Would you walk through your house and clean all the messes? Would you just wash over this congregation, wash whoever's listening on the internet? Lord, would you anoint? Uh, would you, yeah, man, thank you, Lord. Lord, would you increase your anointing in this place, in our lives? Lord, you said since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent will take it by force. So, Jesus, uh, increase anointing, increase your presence, increase your reverence, increase your influence, increase uh, our skill set, our ability through your Holy Spirit, how to clean up messes. Lord, I'll leave it alone. I feel like I just do this for months and hours. Lord, would you compel some to get baptized? Would you compel some to come be in prayer? I love you if you want.